Hello again. Welcome to Lesson 2 of Eclipse and Java for Total Beginners. In this lesson, we are going to learn a little bit more about Eclipse and then continue working on the person class we created in Lesson 1. Let's start by looking at the Eclipse user interface. If you need to, restart Eclipse. It will launch with your last layout, which for me is with the person class editing in full screen mode here. Now if you've closed this class and reopen it, uh, it's no problem. I'll show you how to do that real quick. I'm going to double click here to get it back to normal view. I'll close the class. And if you came in and Eclipse looked like this, you just expand in the Package, package Explorer, expand the Total Beginner Project, come down, highlight the Person class, right click, select Open, and we're back where we were. For this tutorial, I'm using a small screen size, 800 by 600. So Eclipse is a little bit cramped, but you'll still get the idea. Also, if you're running another platform, Linux or Mac, uh, the appearance is going to be different. You'll see your native uh, look and feel, but the functionality should be the same. The Eclipse desktop is called the Workbench, and it's comprised of four regions. We have this region in the middle, where you normally would have our Java editor, uh, we have this region on the left where right now we've got the Package Explorer open. We've got this region down below where right now we have our Problems window open. The Problems we'll get to that shows us uh, compiler errors and so on. And then we have this region on the right where currently we have the Task List and the Outline. Now each of these regions can hold one or more views. So each of these windows is considered a view in Eclipse. Now Eclipse also has the concept of a perspective. And a perspective is basically a layout of predefined views that are appropriate for a particular task. So we've been using the Java perspective. And if I click up here, we can use the debug perspective, which just basically rearranges things to make it good uh, if, we're, if we're running the debugger. You can arrange the workbench in many different ways. I'll just show you a few examples. You can open and close views. For example, I can close the task list, then I can come back here, show view, go down and reopen the task list. You can change perspectives by either pressing a perspective button up here or going window, open perspective. Either one of those works. And you can drag and drop views to different regions of the screen. For example, I can take the task list, I can drag it down as a tab pane here, I can drag it as a split pane to the vertically, I can drag it as a split pane horizontally, and so forth. You can also play with the toolbar up here, squeezing things around. I can move those off so I have a little bit more room and still access them with a little drop down arrow there. Eclipse has extensive online help. For example, if I go here, go to the help contents, I can look up some of the things we were just working, uh, talking about, workbench, perspectives, views, and so forth. So now let's get back to the person class. I'm going to double click this to expand it again. And this is a really good time to quickly discuss some special characters in the Java syntax. As mentioned before, curly braces enclose all blocks of code, including the entire class and methods. And you can see here when I click, the matching one is highlighted by Eclipse. Fortunately, most of the time, Eclipse put in, puts in the uh, ending curly brace as soon as you type the beginning one. Now next, notice that statements all end with semicolons. A statement is kind of like a complete sentence. It usually is used to assign a value to a variable or to run a method or something along those lines. When you declare a method or a constructor, the name is followed by a set of parentheses. These parentheses enclose parameters passed to the method or the constructor. Now lots of methods have no parameters, but they still need empty parentheses. 
As I mentioned before, the double slashes here indicate inline comments, and there are a couple other ways to do comments that we'll talk about later on. If you've never used C or a similar programming language, the Java syntax is a little strange at first, but Eclipse helps a lot by automatically formatting the code for you. Next, let's add some methods to the person class. Most classes you will write contain simple methods to set or get data from fields, and these are affectionately called getters and setters. So let's write a getter and setter method for the name field, and then you'll see what we're talking about. So I'm going to say public string. This is the get name method. So it's going to return the name, which is a string, and I say return name. And that's all there is to it. For the setName method, we're going to use Eclipse to help us a little bit. Now, follow this carefully. I'm going to type PUB and hit Control Space, which pulls up the code assist, just like we did in a previous example. Now, the very first item is public method, which is what I want. Now, I hit Enter. Now, notice here, there's a slight difference in the appearance. This has got a little rectangle around it. What that tells me is that we're inside a code assist template. So it's asking me for the return type. I'm going to type void. And then instead of a space or arrow, I'm going to hit the tab key. And that's going to take me to the next element of this method, which is the name. This method is called set name. Again, I hit the tab. It takes me inside the parentheses where I can put in the parameters for this method, in which case this is string any name. And we'll talk about the content of this in a minute. And again, I hit tab one more time, and it takes me to where I can type the body of the method. So it's a little bit of a shortcut. I can tab through the various elements I need to define the method. Now, in this case, I'm going to say name equals any name and end with a semicolon. Now let's look at these methods. The getName method returns a string, so that's why we say string here, and the string it returns is just our name field, which is the same thing as up here. The keyword return tells Java that this is the value that's going to be returned when this method is called. Now, the setName method doesn't return any value. That's why this says void. But it takes as a parameter a string. And I've chosen to give this string parameter the name any name. And inside this method, it just says name, which is, again, my private my field up here is equal to whatever the value of any name happens to be. Now, it's important to understand that this parameter could be called just about anything. I just happen to have called it any name, and we'll see that in a minute. Now we start to have some fun. You can see that these methods are very simple, and you could see it would be repetitive if we had a bunch of fields where we're just doing get and set methods that are just one line of code each. So Eclipse has a wizard that does this automatically for us. To do the wizard, I go source, generate getters and setters, and I'll move this down here so you can see it. And the only field I have that doesn't already have a getter and setter is maximum books. So I'll check that, and I say we want a get and a set method. I hit OK, and here are our two new methods. Now, they look pretty much the same, except it's an integer instead of a string here, but it's just returning the value of the field. Now, this is new. Let's look carefully at this method, set maximum books. This part's familiar. Void, it doesn't return anything. Now, the parameter is an integer. That's fine. But the parameter name is maximum books, which, of course, is the exact same name as our field. But it means a completely different thing. The parameter maximum books just means that's the name of the we're giving 
to the value that's passed in when we call this method. It just happens to be called the same. And you can see it's black here, which means it's a local variable, whereas blue over here means that this is a field in this class. So that explains why this is the, these two words are the same, because we can choose any name we want for this, including the name of the field. The this period maximum books means the following. This means this particular object. So when I say this period maximum books, I'm saying the maximum books field for the current object. Now in this set method, the word this period is optional, which is why I didn't use it up here in the in the set name. I could have put this period name, but I just put name because the compiler knows that I mean the uh, field called name. But when Eclipse creates the method, it adds the this period, which a lot of people think improves the clarity because it makes it clear that maximum books here is a field for this object as opposed to maximum books over here, which is just a local variable. Now this can be a little confusing at first, but as you see and write more code, it will become easier. Now if you're following along, you should have the same file I do. If not, you can pause the video to catch up. Okay, now to review a little, a class typically contains three things. Fields, constructors, and methods. And I'm gonna type in methods there, save. Now the order of these things doesn't really matter too much to the compiler, but if we stay in the order that we're there in now, it makes it a lot easier for other programmers who are looking at, at these classes, especially when the files get large. Now I'm going to double click here to reduce the size of this edit box, and I'm going to slide this guy over, and let's just open up the person class now in the package explorer and we see a schematic representation of the class. We can see we've got two fields, maximum books and name, we've got a constructor, and we've got our four methods. At this point we have a class that can do a few things. In the next lesson we'll try out the person class using the Eclipse scrapbook. This ends lesson two. I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now.